Hello, my name is Jeff Morris. I'm a senior application expert with Imagina Technologies and I would like to welcome you to today's video tech tip dealing with line coding within Civil 3D. This is the second part of a three-part series, therefore this is considered Line Coding 102. Line work code sets have been around Civil 3D for the last few releases and in the first part of the series we looked at the so-called bread and butter coding. In this part we'll look at more advanced coding techniques and as we discovered in the first part line coding works hand in hand with the figure prefix database and in the first part we looked at how we can give certain styles or certain layers of the line work within the figure prefix database in this part we'll look at how we can predefine the line work as being break lines for surfaces and in part three we'll look at how we can predetermine these lines to be lot lines which then can generate parcels. The bottom line is that there is still greater field to finish productivities with such advanced features as we'll be covering in this part. We'll look at some special codes such as the horizontal and vertical offsets of line work and we'll look at how we can stop those offsets and start them later on. We'll look at special line segment codes such as recalling or connecting to points. In the last part we looked at the OC point on curve feature. In this feature we'll look at the begin curve and end curve and how that differs from the on curve features. As I mentioned in the figure prefix database, we can predetermine if certain lines are break lines or not. And we'll look at how we can add these predetermined break lines to surfaces. Now let's move out over to Civil 3D to see how these features work. Okay, so here we are in Civil 3D, and I have a drawing open which has a reference surface attached to it. Let's create a new survey database, give it a name, and now I have different methods of importing survey information into this database. I can go to the import survey data wizard available in my home tab, and I'm going to uh, assign a coordinate system to this newly made survey database just to give me ultimate flexibility. We will be bringing in a point file and we want to bring in the right away and fence. We'll be looking at this point file later on. We don't need to create a network for this because it's not a electronic field book. And just review everything once again and click finish. So the line work comes in. The line work is all stylized. Now let's look at the text file that brought in this, uh, these points to have a look at what is actually going on underneath the hood. Simplest way of doing that is right clicking on the import event and go to properties and there the text file is listed and I can click on this little icon to edit that text file. One thing that I want to point out is that uh, we have our right away and then I have a space between my right away and the description left and because I'm using these spaces I decided to use a forward slash as my delimiter in my line coding so there the default is space, but I wanted to use the space to add parameters to my description. The other thing that you'll notice is that I do have my begin curve, and what that does then, all the points that fall between the be begin curve and the end curve are going to be treated as compound or reverse curves, very similar to the OC. So therefore I don't need to have continuous OCs or on curves. I can simply use the begin curve and the end curve. 
some of these features do not have a begin code because they are um, already set in the figure prefix database. And this line down here, 3050, actually has two descriptions. And it's separated by my delimiter, which again is my slash key. I also have a connect point. So as I draw my fence one line, it's going to connect to an existing point. And we can look at the difference between CP, which is connect point, and RPN, which is recall point. You will also notice that I have a semicolon, which designates that anything beyond that semicolon is going to be a remark and can be ignored. So let's look at what actually happened here. Here I have my right away left. It does a straight segment and then I have my right away left begin curve and all the other right away lefts now are uh, either compound curves or reverse curves. Up here I have my fence and fence one and my fence line continues in one direction. My fence one comes down to this point and then it connects to an existing point uh, 4837. Now up here you will notice we have a recall point rather than connect point and it's basically the difference in what is connected to what. Recall point will go from the point originated into the point that we are designating it to, whereas connect point goes the other way around. So let's import directly a point file, and it is my property line. Again, we're using all the defaults. And now what has happened is For point 5005, we have our recall point. So it starts from here and it jumps up to the uh, 5029. So it connects that figure to my existing fence line. And again, we have two descriptions here for this, L line 2 and fence. The last file that we want to bring in, Hill Roads, and if we look at our survey tab, under our figures, we now have figure groups. Back a curb line left and back a curb line right, and we have these sub-figures. That are all connected. So here we have a series of back a curb, line left, I have my begin curve, and then I've got my horizontal offset. I've got one horizontal offset, a second horizontal offset, and a vertical offset, and a third horizontal offset, and a third uh, vertical offset. So what this will actually do is, from my beginning of my curb line, back a curb line, it will do a horizontal offset of minus 2. So it will generate a second line, which is this line here. And it has the same elevation as my back a curb line, because there is no vertical offset. The horizontal offset is minus 2. And then it generates another line line 3, which is my horizontal offset, and it goes down 20 centimeters. So this is a uh, second feature line. And then it generates a third feature line, which is going to be my edge of pavement, with my horizontal offset and a positive vertical off offset. And it generates these, all these figure lines until I come up to my stop offset. And stop offset will stop the offset. This might be a uh, curb cut or a handicap ramp. 
and then at the next point it carries on again. So let's look at this text file similar to what we did last time. It's not expected that the surveyors type all this in in the field. They simply in the field book create a sketch of what the profile of that curb is and then later on we can enter that into the text file. So this is my horizontal and vertical offset, this is my stop offset, and then I just copy that whole line down to the next one to, to continue on, and then at the end I have my end curve. And now in order to take these figures and add them to a surface as break lines, I simply right click on the figures and create break lines. And these break lines that we have predetermined in the figure prefix database as to being break lines are now defaulted as break lines. Now I can change my line here. I can allow some break lines or I can either add other uh, objects as break lines by simply clicking them on or off. And up here it's asking me which surface it needs to be selected to. So I'm going to add them to my finished ground surface. From survey, their standard break lines. So now we have a nice defined road surface here based on these break lines that we had set. So this wraps up part two of my three-part series. In the third part, we'll be looking at uh, bringing in these lot lines, how to define lot lines, and also bringing in building footprints where we can have the uh, rectangle and the right turn advanced features. I hope you enjoyed this video tech tip. For more information, please visit us at www.imaginit.com or you can call us at 1-800-356-9050. Please check back often here for more video tech tips, white papers, and blogs. Thank you very much and have a good day.